This is Twit. So there, here's what we've done so far. We've shown them how to get a library that will let them interpret the R codes. We've shown them where they can buy these things, these receivers. And we've shown them how they can interpret the data that's coming into the receiver to do something unique when I hit that button. Okay, here's what we need to do now, though. Before I go on to the next triggering exercise, because I, I do want to show them how to do something a little bit different, uh, would you be interested in seeing how this hardware actually works? I would be interested in that. Okay, so here's what we've got. We've got this, this little device here. Um, I made this because I got bored, and yes, that is the seal of the, the Jesuits. How'd you put that on there? Uh, you know, 3D printing. Uh. Eh, it's, you know, again, I get bored, I make things. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, the reason why I made this is because I wanted a little play a playground whenever I'm doing IR projects, and that's that's what this does. Oh, I hope I can get this off. What I mean, kind of screwdriver are you using there? Uh, oh, oh, I don't know. This might be an iFixit screwdriver. Mm. They're currently sponsoring the <laughs> Twit TV network. Let's see if I can actually get this out. Does it have a name? Uh, this is one, this, no, this is just the from the iFixit kit. Oh. And there we go. Uh, not stripped, it's just the, uh, the, the, the oh. 3D model that I created. Yeah. So you didn't do anything to the Get remote itself, there. right? So I could have used any of these remotes. Right. No, yeah, any remote. All you have to do is that, that first step of capturing the codes. So you need to see what the codes look like, and then you can interpret what's happening. All right, so this is what's inside here. Super simple uh, circuitry. So I've got an Arduino Nano. This is the heart of, uh, of the uh, of the of the device. This so that is, little square is the, is the Arduino. Well, this thing, this the whole, whole thing. thing. The whole thing the, is the Arduino rectangle. Nano. Right. This right here, this is where the receiver is. Right here, that's where the LED is. So that, that's my transmitter side, which I have not used yet. But I, we will maybe next week. So this super simple circuit allows me to receive any IR code and interpret it. And it will also allow me to send any IR code that I want, uh, which we haven't used yet. But let's go ahead and show people how to do this from bare bones. So we're going to build this so people are not confused about how they actually make one of these things. Now, everyone, if you go to the overhead, there you go. Everyone knows what this is. This is an Arduino Nano. This is a little breadboard that I had with the, the receiver. Now, as we said at the beginning, I only need three pins for this. I need power, five volt. I need ground, which is black, and I need signal. This, this yellow line is the line that's actually going to be giving the data to the Arduino. These two are just power. Right? Why do you need two for power? Well, because you need a ground line and you need a voltage line. Okay. Um, yeah, so anytime you've got power, DC power, you need, you need two lines. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to hook up, uh, because we, I, know, I know you can't read it. I'm sorry, Megan. Uh, there's a five-volt line here, and there's a ground line there. Uh, it, it, actually, here, go ahead and give me the Megan stamp of approval. Do you yes. see GMD, yeah. which is ground, and 5V, which is five volts? You could also get like a little magnifying I, glass. I to probably help should. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and do this. Let me lock these together, and I'm gonna hook up the five volt to the five volt line, and the ground to the GND to the ground line. And do you remember what pin I told it in the in the programming? What pin I told the data to go two. into? Two. Right. So D2 is right there. Right here. Oh, oh. D, oh, sorry. D2 is right there which means plug it in right there. So this is now active. This is one of the simplest circuits we've ever made on know-how. All I had to do was give it power and then put the data line into D2. So technically, if I were to load this up with the software that we just created, I should be able to make it do the same thing as the, the finished product. Let's, let's go ahead and, and try that. So let's hook this up. It's got power. I got to go over to my IDE and tell it where to find the Arduino, and let's go ahead and try to upload. It's going to compile the sketch, which means it's just checking through the code, making sure there's no errors before it. And now it's uploading, and when, as soon as that, that done uploading. So if, Megan, if you would, grab the remote control, and uh, go ahead and press the, the number five. There you go. There's the OK code. Ah. So this, is, this was fresh. There was no code on this. The, this means the code works and our circuit works, right? Yes, that's exciting. Uh, well, kind of exciting, but I mean, still, I'm kind of locked into my computer. I mean, this not so useful. I mean, okay, I see codes, but I don't think that's going to entertain us for more than a couple of, of well, minutes, Well, it's useful maybe. for learning. It's useful for learning, but let's make it useful 
around the house. I've got one more little module here that I've created. Mm. What I want to do is I want to actually trigger something in the real world. Burke, if you go to the overhead there. Thank you. I want to trigger something in the real world. In this particular, particular case, I have two LEDs. Now, the reason why I'm using LEDs is because it's easy, but also if, if I can trigger these LEDs with the remote control, I can trigger anything. I can trigger a relay that starts a massive piece of equipment. I could unlock doors that are electronically controlled. I can turn on and off an alarm system. Uh, this, this just shows you, if, if I can get this to work, it shows you that what we've done today is practical for anything beyond just practice. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're gonna tie this to the system like that. I love these, like little Legos for, they are. for geeks. Did you 3D print those or you bought those? No, these are all bought. My 3D printer is not good enough, Megan. Mm. Mm. All right, so I need, uh, here we go. This is gonna be my ground, so I'm hooking it up to the same ground pin there. And then I've got two different colors. I think it's orange and yellow. Let me, let me make sure I kind of forgot. Okay, that's, so that's the white one, and I think that one is the blue one. Okay, so I need these two colors. I need red and orange. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie that into digital three and digital four. Okay, so what I've just done is I've hooked up two LEDs. One is on digital pin three and one is on digital pin four. So what I need to do is I need to program this so that if I push the buttons on this remote, it will trigger digital pin three and digital pin four. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. If you go back to my screen, Burke, uh, let's just go ahead. This is a bit more complicated and I don't want to write the whole thing out, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it because I am a cheating uh, dork. Use the tools that you have. I do. There we go. Okay, so this is the whole code. The top looks exactly the same. So this is, this is still the same program that we've, we dealt with in the last two examples. I've done this, pin mode three and pin mode four. So what I did was I told the Arduino, digital pin three and digital pin four, if you go back to that screen, are output. In other words, they're only gonna be used to send out a signal. And what that means is if I send a signal to three, it's gonna light up one of these LEDs. If I send a signal to four, it's gonna light up the other one, okay? Now here's my loop. My loop looks exactly the same. This is exactly the same as the last example. The only difference is what's happening in the function that I wrote called IR control. In this, I'm still using case statements, but notice how I've added this. This is, a, this is the only part that's different about this, this function. Digital write three high, which means if this is triggered, if this code is received, it will write high, which is on, to digital pin three. Down here, it says, if, if this case happens, this, so this is the right button, digital pin four goes high. The middle button, the okay button, if I push that, both digital pin three and digital pin four will go low. So this is what it means. If I hit the left button, it will turn on one LED. If I hit the right button, it will turn on the other LED. If I hit the okay button, it turns off all the LEDs. Got it, so it's kind of like when they go low, we go high? Yeah, well, when, when it goes low, then I go off. Okay. <laughs> That's, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's a thing, it's a thing. So let's go ahead and upload okay, this. Okay, let's do it. Let's, okay, COM4, good, and push it. And Megan, uh, I'm gonna give you, the, I have no idea if this is gonna work because I haven't tested this wiring yet, but we're gonna give it to you. So same thing, you're gonna push left, right, and okay, and these should be, do different things. We're done uploading. So if, if this is working, these LEDs are gonna light up and turn off based on what Megan pushes. So okay. the, the, the actually it's over here. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so then, okay go ahead. Left. There <gasps> you go. Right. Oh, right. <gasps> and okay. Okay. There you go. <gasps> you did it. So you can, <laughs> any combination you want. So you are triggering something in the actual world. This is not just on a computer screen. This is not just in the serial console. This is something, and if I can trigger LEDs, this is, this is a uh, principle that we've taught to our know-how group. If I can trigger LEDs, I can trigger anything. Anything? Anything. <laughs>